The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to modify LGB and other similar brands of brass G-gauge train track to be compatible with the screw-on type rail joiners used with Aristocraft track. Aristocraft track has these threaded holes near the end of the rails which allow the rail joiners to be screwed on. This allows for a strong mechanical connection between adjacent pieces of rail which I find helps the tracks stay together better through heat changes in the winter and summer months. LGB track, on the other hand, does not employ a mechanical connection using screws. This uses standard fish plates like you'd find on other scales of model railroading like N or HO. And while many like this and it performs well, I personally am not a fan. I like a mechanical connection between my pieces of track. Also, as joiners get old, especially if you buy a used track, they're often pretty damaged and it can be hard to get them back in appropriate shape to use. These ones are pretty good and usable, but they'd also be kind of hard to clean up. So there's a few different reasons why I like to switch out to the Aristocrat style connectors. There are only a couple of tools that you need for this job, but some of them are a little bit specialized depending on what you may already have in your toolkit at home. The most basic tool is going to be a pair of needle nose pliers. I use this to remove the fish plates from the old LGB track at the beginning of the process. It's a slightly destructive process, but I find that this works best since I'm not going to be reusing those rail joiners anyways. Another simple tool is this green Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, it's part of a sponge on this particular one, which makes it easy to clean the oxidation off of the rails while they're taken apart. You're also going to need an electric drill, or you can even use a hand drill bit driver if you'd like, but I find the electric drill is a lot easier, of course. And that's going to be used to drill a 1.6 millimeter pilot hole in the rails before you use this M2 by 0.4 metric tap to make the threaded holes. And then, of course, to drive that tap, I use a small T-handle tap wrench. However, you can also use just a pair of pliers or something like that. This is a very small tap, and it's a very soft material that we're tapping into, that being brass. So you really don't need to put a whole lot of force into it. And then finally, you're going to need some sort of a center punch to mark where you're going to drill your holes. I like to use an automatic center punch that's spring-loaded. However, just a manual punch that you hit with a hammer will work just as well. As you can see, I've already removed one rail entirely from the ties, which involved me removing the rail joiner. This first step of the process is sure to make LGB purists cringe a little bit, but it's necessary for this process. There may be a better way to remove these rail joiners non-destructively, but I'm not particularly familiar with it, so I use this method. In my case, all of the rail joiners I'm removing came from used track, and they're in pretty bad condition, very oxidized, so there's no real loss here. What I do is I take my needle nose pliers and I go to both sides of this rail joiner, grip firmly, and twist it away from the rail. When it comes out of the factory, and like this used track is, the rail joiner is crimped quite securely to the rail, which makes it pretty much impossible to remove without damaging the ties unless you do this. Oops, so in that case, actually, I twisted a little overzealously and it popped out of the tie. As you can see, this joiner has a little hook here at the end, and that interlocks with this first tie. Ideally, what you do is you twist this joiner away from the rail, and then you're able to simply slide the rail back, which may be difficult depending on how old your rail is. This rail, when I removed the other side, was pretty difficult due to all the dirt and debris that had built up at each of the tie connections. But with a little bit of force, you should be able to slide the rail back, and then ideally at that point you can lift the rail joiner straight out without any damage to the tie. This first tie got a little bit of damage, but that's not going to be an issue for me. This track is used outdoors anyways, and so damage is frankly inevitable. Now, a couple of tools that I forgot to mention in the earlier part of the video were a vise, which is extremely useful for holding your rail firmly for the drilling and tapping process to free up your hands, although you do need to be careful not to clamp too aggressively on the rail. This is a small vise, you shouldn't have to worry about that, but if you have a very large vise, you could certainly leave an imprint on the soft brass track if you really crank down on the handle. The other tool is a piece of Aristocraft track which has rail joiners installed on one end. These are going to allow you to line up exactly where you want to drill your holes in your LGB track. 
So I'm going to take my punch here. I'm making sure that the rail is butted up all the way against the other rail. I'm going to go right in the middle of the hole on the joiner and leave a mark. Next, I'm going to take my 1.6 millimeter drill bit and my electric drill, which you're going to want to have on the low speed setting so you can take things easy and slowly so you don't accidentally break a bit or get a hole in the wrong spot. Now, a critical thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is you need a bit whose collet chuck can get small enough to grip this 1.6 millimeter drill bit. I have another drill, or I'll be one that simply can't get small enough. It can only grip a 1 8 inch bit which isn't nearly small enough, so keep that in mind. You're going to want to close the chuck right down. And you do need to ensure the bit is centered in the chuck. It's so small it can very easily get caught between one of the jaws. And then you're going to go ahead and center your bit very carefully on that hole you marked with the center punch and begin to slowly drill. There's no reason to go fast. One thing to be aware of as you're drilling is this drill bit is extremely small and it's not nearly strong enough to hold up the weight of this large drill on a side load. So as you begin to drill into the rail, you need to be really careful not to apply any twisting with the drill bit. You need to make sure you're supporting the weight of the drill fully so you don't snap off your bit. Now comes the all-important step of tapping the hole you've just drilled. Again, this is going to be an M2 diameter by 0.4 millimeter pitch thread that you're creating with your tap. I like to use just a little bit of Tap Magic cutting fluid to ease the cutting process. Just a drop will do ya. In fact, a drop is far more than you need. This is a very, very small tap. And then again, the tap handle is much heavier than the tap can support if you let your hand off and allow it to tip like that. So um, do take great caution as you begin tapping not to break your tap. These little guys are pretty expensive. Brass is pretty soft so the tapping should go pretty easily. If you've ever tapped steel before and had an unpleasant experience this is nothing like that. It'll be very easy. I like to go pretty much as far as the tap will allow me because the first few threads, depending on what kind of tap you get, will be tapered. And obviously tapered threads aren't what you want. You want full threads. So go ahead and use up most of the length of that tap. That should be far enough now. And then back it back out. Again, be careful as you're backing it out so you don't drop your tap or snap off your tap inside of the rail. And that's all there is to it. Now you just want to spend a little time maybe with a file and with your green scotch bright to clean up the rail as well as make an identical hole at the opposite end. Rinse and repeat for the second rail on this piece of track and then reassemble the track and install your Aristocraft rail joiners. It's a pretty simple process but it does take a little bit of time. If this video is helpful please let me know. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve the process or advice for other people that might want to follow this video tutorial please put it down below so everybody can see it. Thanks for watching.